Mrs. Jacqueline Smith works in the early childhood um, education sector and she supervises um, teachers who teach at that level. And uh, I'm telling you, a heart and a passion to see the wisdom of God poured into teachers at that level so that the foundation can be strong. You know, I watched her on a Zoom call during the pandemic um, teaching um, my six-year-old to read. Well, he was five then. And uh, the patience, the, 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 the heart of a teacher. Christ is indeed living in and through teachers in this nation. And all we need is to multiply that force of righteousness on the education platform. We are going to listen to Mrs. Smith, who will share with us for a few minutes. Thank you, Mrs. Norman. Um, good evening, everyone. It is an indeed a pleasure of mine to be here this evening to, to share on this platform. It is, it is so needed because as teachers, we need the encouragement of each other. You know, um, we need to get an understanding that we are not alone and that whatever God has called us to, he has indeed, he, he, he is equipping us for that. And so thank you for this invite. I've been really coming on to some of the discussions that we have been having on this platform. Um, sometimes I would share a point of view and sometimes I would just read what is there. And it gave me an understanding that we are not alone. But as Mrs. Norman said, I work in the early childhood sector. That's not where I started. I actually started at the post-secondary, that is heart. That was my baptism into the education system. And I, I, I saw challenges upon challenges with students at that level. But I never got a full understanding. And then I left and I went into the secondary school. And wow, I was like, you know, surprised at some of the challenges that I was faced with. But God has, as Mrs. Christian says, God has a way of doing things. And sometimes I found myself telling God that what he has done, I don't really find it funny. But I also learned that he's not trying to amuse me. What he's doing is that he is working with me to bring forth his glory. He's working through me to bring forth his glory. And so, but I, I find it funny, it's what he's going to do. And so for the last 12 plus years, I've been working in this early childhood sector in the parish of Anova. And a lot of persons might be wondering, and over, yes, that's where we work. And the schools, the, the teachers in the early childhood sector in Anova, I have come across some very dedicated teachers. But I also come across some teachers who, with all the dedication, do not understand their purpose, their reason for being. And so I've been asking the Lord, you know, how do I help these teachers? to understand that they are workers in his vineyard. They, what, how do I bring that to them? Because they know Christ, but they get discouraged. And remember, they are dealing with our, they are the foundation level of our education sector. And one of these days, I will, you know, for those who don't know, we will be able to share more of what happens in that sector. But as Christian teachers today, I just want to encourage the teachers to see what you do as unto the Lord. Remember that you impact nations. I remember before I got into this sector, I was working at a boys' home, oh, oh, um, at risk boys. And I remember there was an eight year old, because if we know that the early childhood goes up to, to age, ages eight. Okay, that's grade three. But we don't seem to think that we think that they're in the primary. But under the government, they are early childhood. And I was working with a eight-year-old who was hard. He was hard. You would look at him and he, he, no matter what happens, he would never cry. He doesn't cry. 
but he would hurt every other child in that space. And um, everybody saw him as this tough kid who doesn't cry. And I remember one day I looked at the director and I said, I'm going to make him cry. Now, when I said that, <laughs> she, you know, she opened her eyes and looked at me like, are you crazy? And I, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to make him cry. What eight-year-old doesn't cry? He has to cry. And brethren, teachers, I tell you, all I did to that child one day was to hold him under my arm, hug him, and started rubbing his head and telling him how great he is and how God has a plan for him. And he did not cry. He bawled. He hollered. And everybody heard him. And they came to see what I was doing. And all I was doing was just hugging and rubbing his head, just telling him how special he is. All this child needed was an opportunity to break. It wasn't a whip. It wasn't harsh words. It was just love and compassion because I saw his heart. It was hard because he had to be hard. He had to learn to survive. And as I always say for the teachers in this sector, we have them when they are pliable. We have them when their hearts are open. We have them when they are our little sponges. Just as how whatever you teach them in terms of reading and writing, it will stay with them unless something happens that will derail that. But it will stay with them just the way we need to get the word of God into their lives, the principle of Christ into them. But for us to do that to these babies, to these children, we have to first have it in us. I remember one day I looked at a group of teachers and I said to them, and some of you might just get angry with me when I say, but hear me, hear me out. I said to them that teaching is not a profession. And they, they, they all looked at me like, really? And I said, yes, we are all professionals, but teaching is a calling. Because if you only see it as a profession, you are going to become discouraged. You are going to become disheartened. But if you see it as a calling on your life from God, then you'll approach it differently because we'll always run to the master teacher. And so that is what I do. Whatever I am going to do, whenever I step into a space, I ask the Lord, what would you have me to do? The teachers, there are some of my teachers online this evening because I've invited a couple of them and I see them. And I'm glad they're here because I'm not telling anything that is not true. <laughs> I'm speaking because this is what I live. I live for this. I live for these children. Just last week, I was at my desk and I was just, I do my work. I was just doing my work. And I heard myself singing the song and I didn't even realize what the theme for this week um, and e, e, e connection would be. But I heard myself singing the song, where you lead me, I will follow. And I stopped and I said, no, Lord, I'm not singing that song because I don't know where you're going to take me. And so I'm not singing that. I'm not making that commitment. But as I sat there and I sang it, I could hear him saying, I'm taking it to another level, another level in this what, that you are now doing. And so my heart broke. And I realized that not only am I there, as Mrs. Norman alluded to to, to, to help with a reading program and to get these children ready for grade one so that they go into grade one with the ability to read and to do basic math, but I'm also there to help the teachers to do what God has called them to do, to put the wisdom and knowledge of God into the lives of these children, to speak in their devotions, the scripture, the word of God. A lot of these children are not churched. They do not attend any church. And so when they come into our space, we have to be mindful that we give them the truth of God's word. We have to also ensure that we do it with love. Do not just go into a class. Do not just go into your school and not be intentional about what you're going to do. Be intentional that I'm changing lives. I am changing lives. And how do I do it? I run to master teacher. And do not get discouraged. Jesus had 12 disciples. One betrayed him. One denied him. He didn't get the full 100%. But that did not stop him. He still did what he came to do. 
And so we are called to do it. Do not look at the percentages. The scripture tells us, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. You see, a lot of problems we are facing, we are faced with today in our high schools. It didn't start there. And so we are trying to bend it at that level. We are trying to bend those students to change them, to mold them at that level. When we have an opportunity to start shaping and fashioning them at the pliable, useful sponge level. They come to us at that stage. And teachers, I encourage you and employ you this evening. Do not look at your job and say, well, I'm not being paid enough. Nobody will ever be able to pay you for what God has called you to do. And God will not allow any of us to call up his name and say that he has called us and is unable to provide for us. If he calls us, he will provide for us. David says, I was young, now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging for bread. None of us who answer the call of God will go wanting. He will provide. So let us do what we do with passion. Let us make a recommitment to run this race with zeal, knowing that what we do are far-reaching effects. What we do will affect, affect generations to come because that is the heart and the mind of God. And so that is my heart to do what I can because I've seen that it works. I know it works. And so I encourage you this evening, don't give up. Let him lead. Just follow. Just follow. Just put our hands in his hands and say, wherever you take me, I will go. Because the plans you have for me, as it pertains to these children, they are good. They are good. And I can trust the heart and mind of God. And so that's my testimony and my encouragement to you this evening. Never, ever give up. God bless you.